Okay, so I've got two pieces of clay and I've wedged up pieces that I know I can center. Okay, and then obviously two bats. I went ahead and went with 12 inch bats. Uh, especially for the top piece, you're gonna want a little bit wider area. So you could probably get away with a square for the bottom, but for the top, I would definitely go with the 12 inch bat at least, okay? So I've got that on there. Got my clay really well wedged up, gumdrop, nice and soft. Throw it right on there in the middle, texture side up, full speed for centering. Okay, and I always kind of make sure it's sealed to the bat and kind of push down to make sure it's not gonna hydroplane. Lock in, remember, flex those biceps, lock in. We're gonna squeeze and let it pop up. Remember that your center point should always be the highest point. Going back down again, flexing those biceps. We're going back to the gum drop. Okay, remember that we never want the center point to be lower. That should always be the highest. Otherwise, you're gonna get the valley of death and it's gonna be really difficult to center. We're gonna cone up and down at least twice to help align the clay particles. And I would, on your sketch, kind of make a, um, a little line where you feel like it makes the most sense to separate where your two pieces will be. Okay, finishing off my centering. Feel free to ask questions as I go. Okay. Pretty good. And then also remember some of the bats have gotten warped, so you might check to make sure that it's gonna stay on there. Okay. So I'm gonna start this bottom piece just like any other wheel thrown vessel. Which one should I do? The short, the stouty one. That one? The fat one. Yeah, okay, we'll do that one. So if you think about where it makes the most sense to divide it, <laughs> <laughs> the bottom part, I'm just gonna make a wide bolt, okay? So I'm gonna make my hole, we're gonna hover. Make sure that my thumbs are staying stuck together like they're Siamese twins supporting on the outside. Gonna open that up until I can kind of get in there to measure. Okay, and then I'm gonna flatten to make sure I have an accurate measurement. Flatten the base, that is. And where do I want my base thickness to be? quarter of an inch. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I know, it's like I've thrown on the wheel or something. <laughs> All right, so now what we're focused on is the base width. So looking at my picture, looking at my picture, um, looking at that base width, that's what we're looking for down here. We're not worried about the top part yet, okay? So I think I might open it just a touch more. Okay. Make sure that my base is nice and flat and even. Make sure before I start pulling my walls that rather than a valley, I've got that more of a right angle on the inside so you don't have this huge buildup of clay right down there. And I'm gonna to start to pull. Okay, remember the further along in my project, the slower my wheel, but never snail speed. And right now we are not concerned about the shape. We are pulling a cylinder or a volcano. Okay, we are not getting that wide bowl shape yet. If you try to get the wide bowl shape from the start, it's probably gonna get wide and collapse. So we're pulling up into a cylinder or a volcano shape first. So I'm gonna squeeze. Pull up and in, pull to the top, but not past the top. 
And because we are gonna connect another piece onto here, make sure that you leave it a little bit thicker than you would like the lip of a bowl, let's say, um, so that we have enough of a lip to connect that top piece to, okay? Okay, pull again. Remember, for pulling, your hands should always be connected in some way. So my thumb of my left hand was resting on my right. And I'm kind of pushing them against each other for stability. Okay, remember, we tend to get that buildup of clay at the bottom. So I'm going to pull that up until that thickness incorporates. Okay. So my wall thickness is pretty good now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and shape. And I'm gonna slow down even a little bit more. As I start to widen this, it's gonna wanna wobble because the wider, the further away from center that it gets, the more it's gonna wanna wobble. So I'm gonna start, my outside hand is just supporting, my inside hand I'm starting at the bottom and I'm slowly stretching that clay in the shape that I want it. Um, make sure that you stretch slowly. If you try to stretch your clay too quickly, it'll either get super wobbly and go off center, or you're gonna start seeing rips because it's gonna stretch too quickly and it won't be able to keep up. So stretch slowly and I'm gonna make a pretty wide bowl. Just be careful. You wanna make sure that the base can hold up what's going on up here. So try not to make it so wide that the base can't support it anymore and it flops. We don't want that. All right, so I'm gonna say that's pretty good. Clean up all the excess slip and water from there. Make sure that you have a nice flat lip for connecting. And then I'm gonna cut my foot. You can also kind of use the rib to help shape as well. Looks great. All right, so we're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna put that to the side. And then oh, the one thing that I wanna do before I put that to the side, um, I'm gonna grab a pair of calipers. So calipers are gonna help us, since both pieces are stuck to the bat, the calipers are gonna help us make sure that that top piece is gonna fit. So I'm gonna take my calipers, I'm gonna grab my outside measurement at the white, oops, the widest point, okay? So now I'm gonna set this to the side. I know, I'll get that later. Okay. And I'm gonna center for my top piece. Okay, a um, little bit more clay, but again, don't get more than you can handle. And I'm doing two pieces you could do it in three pieces, four pieces. You can use as many parts as you need. I'm just showing two pieces so that you can see the general idea of this technique. But I mean, you could make something that's five parts. You would just have to keep measuring, okay? With your calipers. Once I get this centered, um, on this part, we do not need to worry about the base because it's going, I already have my base because it's on the bottom piece. 
So this is a situation where you do not have to worry about base thickness because this part isn't gonna have a base. All right. This plate is not on the center. All right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a hole. I'm gonna go all the way to the back. Okay, so I'm essentially gonna have a, um, my top piece just doesn't have a base. So I'm going to, and I'm, I'm gonna flatten it just a little bit because I know that I need this width. I'm just gonna go ahead and flatten it so that I can kind of start getting there. Okay, and then I'm gonna make my hole And I'm gonna go all the way to the back. If your thumb can reach. Okay, so I went all the way to the back and then I'm gonna start opening it. Um, I wanna kind of keep this volcano shape, especially since the top of my vase gets really skinny. If you widen everything and then try to bring it all the way back to that skinny um, neck part, your clay is probably gonna ripple in on itself. So the goal is to kind of pull with your hand at an angle so that you keep that volcano shape, okay? I'm gonna slow down a little bit. So I'm gonna start opening and then I'm pushing against the bottom or pushing against the bat and pulling out like that. You can use the sponge too. And just kind of try to keep as steady as possible. And then as you feel like you're getting there, Check your caliper measurements. So we're almost there. A little bit more. Okay. So I'm trying to just push on that bottom, bottom edge. So you basically have a donut going on right now. Okay, and we're really close. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it just a little bit, um, like a hair smaller. Um, and then as I pull up, usually I kind of push out a little bit. If you wanna get it right to that measurement, that's fine too. So this time when I pull up, Rather than a cylinder, I'm really going for that volcano because of the shape of my base, okay? So, gonna anchor in, and I'm actually kinda eyeball your bottom, your very bottom thickness. You want it a little bit thicker than quarter of an inch just because when you attach it, you want some clay to be able to kind of push over that seam. So if your bottom, is a little bit thicker than quarter of an inch, that's actually okay. So I'm not gonna squeeze right at the bottom very much, but then I'm gonna squeeze up and in. Okay, so we see where this is going. And I'm gonna go ahead and actually check my caliper measurement one more time. So see, I already got wider just from doing that. So um, I can go ahead and push it in a little bit. And I'm just kind of pushing on that outer wall. And then I'm gonna pull up again. So up and in, think volcano. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of start. And remember when you're um, hugging it in, just make sure just like we have to stretch it out slowly, 
We have to compress it slowly as well, otherwise it'll ripple in on itself. Okay, so notice how much my wheel has slowed down. Wall thickness is almost good. Okay, notice my arms are staying tucked in, my hands are touching so that I can kind of keep steady, okay? Um, I'm gonna kind of reach in there. Remember, we've got the sponges on a stick if you need them. I'm gonna get any sitting water out of there. I'm gonna check that outside measurement again. Okay, and we're pretty good. I'm gonna pull it out just a hair. So I'm just gonna kind of push on that wall a little bit. You have to be kind of careful because if you think about how much clay is actually attached to the bat right now, it's just a thin ring. So sometimes what'll happen, the whole thing will just come off. <laughs> because that ring can't hold itself to the bat. So kind of do everything very carefully down there where the clay is attached to the bat. Okay, and that's great. So now we're gonna start shaping. So I kind of want it to be a bubble here and then it comes in really skinny. So I'm going to squeeze it in a little bit. I still wanna be able to fit my hand in there. And then I'm gonna make the bubble. Um, you wanna be careful anytime you're going from a wide angle to a very drastic small angle, you've gotta do it really carefully. What's gonna to wanna to happen is that this uh, really small uh, neck is gonna to wanna to flop in. So just do everything very carefully. Okay, so down here, bless you. I'm gonna push, so I'm kinda of just doing one of those down there at the bottom. And then the other thing that I encourage you to do is to look at it with your bottom piece, okay? So, if I kind of hover, I can kind of get an idea if that's what I'm going for. You see? Okay. So, I'm liking that so far. I think where they connect, I like how it looks. So I'm gonna keep going with this. So now I'm gonna start choking it in and making that top really skinny part. Okay, I'm gonna do that very carefully. So we're gonna choke in just a little bit at a time. And we just have to be careful because the neck's gonna wanna fall in, okay. Keep your hands really wet so that they slide along the clay. This part's kind of like the teapot spout in ceramics too. Okay, so once I Kind of get that where I want it. I'm gonna start. Um, because we were compressing the clay in, we now have more clay thickness. So I'm pulling up a little bit. And then I'll end up doing a trim cut to get that top lip. Okay. So once you're super skinny and you can't get your hand back in there, all that you can do for the shaping on the bottom part is kind of push a little bit, but you wanna be really careful so that it doesn't collapse in. Let me shut that door. Thank you. Okay, so think about the teapot spout. I'm keeping my hands really wet so that I don't rip this piece off. Okay, and I'm only using one finger on the inside to pull so that it stays nice and skinny. Okay, 
and then I'm gonna do a quick trim cut just to get that top part nice and even. I'm gonna look at it with my bottom piece again, make sure I like it. Maybe, there we go. Okay, so kind of eyeball. Yep, I like that. Okay, so now bottom piece, we're gonna leave it as it is. Top piece, once you know it's exactly how you want it, we need to cut through it with wire cutters. We can't wait until it dries off the bat because it'll be too hard to attach. So I'm gonna take a pair of wire cutters. Okay, I'm gonna make you do it. I'm gonna hold them really taut. Okay, so just make sure that your thumbs are wider than the widest point. And I'm gonna push it against the bat and pull through, okay? And I'm not gonna move it. I'm gonna leave it there. So at this point, I need both pieces to get leather hard. If you try to attach the pieces before leather hard, the bottom piece is gonna, the top, the heaviness of the top piece is gonna collapse the bottom piece. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go ahead and leave them out for the rest of the day. Obviously you guys don't have that luxury. So what I would do if you're doing two pieces, I would leave them out while you're working and then just put them in an open bag when we're going overnight. You guys are always welcome to come in here and check on how hard your clay is throughout the day. Um, but we want them to get leather hard. So I'm gonna leave them out for the rest of the day um, and then we'll see if they're ready for tomorrow to attach. Um, I am going to bag them up overnight. I'm not going to leave them overnight because they would get way too hard. Okay? Questions? Well, will you hit stop for me? <laughs>